this series is called Migration Music. Do you want to talk about a little bit of you coming from Taiwan to the States and how you experience the difference? You bring different cultural elements into your music. What's your way of doing that? And what is the new thing that you are working on on your composition? Please share with us all of these. <laughs> yes. I mean, my training in Taiwan was also uh, Western music, mm. Western classical right. music. I was exposed to uh, some traditional music mm -hmm. and then also Taiwanese opera, like right. on TV or like uh, performances because yeah. my mom uh, likes to sing. Mm. Yeah, so she will play all those like, recordings and then I sing nice. along, and then so so oh. growing up, I was listening to all those like uh, folk folk songs and then uh, Taiwanese opera, all those. And then uh, when I came here, and obviously now I exposed uh, some of the music that we at the time I I wasn't so familiar with. Uh, mm. For instance, like uh, jazz, right? Mm. So so like. A lot, uh, not more jazz music that's uh, played um, in the in the states, mm -hmm. and um, a lot more rock bands mm. <laughs> around, right? So all these years I've been here, and meanwhile I had all this uh, memory from Taiwan. Right. So so from time to time, my music uh, will be like swing back and forth. Sometimes mm. it's more like what I am right now. It's in this environment, and sometimes it's like oh, nostalgically thinking. Well, mm. like I had all this memory from uh, my childhood or my yeah. family or from Taiwan. So I would draw like inspirations from those topics or use yeah. some of the melodies, mm. like um, those mountain songs from the Hakka. Yeah. Hakka music or right. uh, Aboriginal music or like Fuken music. But then sometimes I um, also try to blend. Mm. <laughs> now, since um, I've spent almost like half in Taiwan, half of my lifetime in Taiwan, half here. Mm. So, so I'm like, oh, maybe it's also good to blend like some of the music here. Mm. Some of uh, yeah, the folk music I know uh, back home. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Um, how long have you been teaching at Eau Claire? Uh, this, let me think. Well, I, I believe this is my 10th year here. Ooh. Yeah, I know, tenure. time flies. Uh, yeah, well, I... <laughs> yeah, I, I've been tenured uh, and yeah, I still remember it was just uh, my first year here and adjusting. Mm. Before I moved here, all my um, time spent uh, in the States is like East Coast. Right. So I've never <laughs> spent time actually in Midwest. Mm. So when I moved here, it was summer. Actually, it's beautiful. Very different in winter, as you can right. imagine. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's not that. I didn't experience snow because mm -hmm. like when I was in the North East, like, like we also have, we had snow there, but then it's just right. different. Bigger. A lot colder. <laughs> <laughs> right, a lot colder. Because we both are from Taiwan and it is a very warm place. Oh <laughs> so, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, it's a total different, different experience, different environment. Um, how about we talk a little bit about the new piece that you wrote for piano, which is called Invocation, that you wrote during COVID time. Can you tell us about it? Sure. So uh, what the inspiration came from, because I heard so many stories because of COVID and then people were like struggling. Right. How to cope with it. And then all this the mental changes, like during the time, like, some decide to accept it and some might be uh, actually try to uh, against it. So, mm. so then I started a little bit research like, well, what are some of the different stages that people were facing 
mm. like when they, when this kind of uh, situation happened. Yeah, so like I saw this article talking about these four different stages that uh, we reacted um, to the COVID. Mm. Yeah, so so that's how the piece was set up. So in four different uh, sections, and then right. some of um, the emotions, of course, I overlap, and then or sometimes yes. back and forth because yeah, right. like our emotion swings, right? So yes, in that uh, in the stage three, I see like anger and then depressed and then anxiety they are just like taking turns to appear exactly exactly because uh -huh. the last stage is accept right but then before yeah. often time before we we accept what well, this is the reality we struggle a bit and then it can be going through a lot of different uh scenario like mm -hmm. emotionally we're like oh is this this is this that or like <laughs> yeah yeah Oh, so were you were you also experiencing the psychology while you were composing this piece? Well, I mean, um, personally, I didn't experience those uh, emotions. Not all of them, maybe some of mm. them. I see. But then, like when I was uh, writing the piece, I did uh, try to imagine, like mm. what it would be like. Right. Like if, if I was like experiencing all this uh, emotionally, like different uh, situations, how would I react? Cool. Yeah, COVID definitely gave people a lot of time to self-reflect on, do you think like as a composer, your attitude or um, idea about composition sort of changed because of the time that we had in the last two years? Um. It's not like directly um, influenced the way I I write. Some of the, my my pieces, the topic will certainly relate to what mm. happened. I had more time to think about my surrounding, mm. and then also had the time to observe well the people around me or some people I care about. Thinking about what happened to some of the people that um, luckily I didn't experience, but then how people struggle during the time. And then uh, as a composer, I can contribute to the society and then maybe bring something that's more joyful enlightenment uh, to the people. So, so like to help them out. Uh,